for this place of peace, this place of refuge, this place of just breathing, God. God, we thank you for this week. We thank you for Pastor Tim. We thank you for House of Hope Atlanta. We thank you, God, for the people that are online listening. We thank you, God, for the preacher of the hour. We thank you, God, for the leadership. We thank you, God, for our families. God, we thank you. We thank you for your love, your grace, your mercy. Lord, you are wonderful. You are God alone. Thank you, God, for choosing each and every one of us. Thank you, God, for the musicians. Thank you, God, for the camera people. Thank you, God, for the ushers. Thank you, God, for saving us, Lord. Thank you, God, for making sure that we are healed in your name. Anybody that's dealing with an infirmity, Father God, we ask that you come and that you heal them. Not because we know that you can't, but because we know that you can. You're a healer. You're a provider, God. So anything that anyone in here needs, Father God, we are seeking your face. God, I want you to show up and show out in this place like never before. Let us just be able to worship you, honor you, praise you, glorify your name. Father God, don't allow us to sit down. Allow us to get up because we have legs, Father God. And we dare not allow the rocks to cry out when we're able to. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read for you all. I need you to stand when I read the word of God. I'm old school. We're going to read Psalms 34, 1 and 3. Or I'm going to read from the NIV version. I will extol the name. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I I don't think you heard that. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I mean, you woke up this morning, right? Hallelujah. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Will you do that? Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I don't know about you, but I was in that hurricane that they had, that they had in um, New Jersey. So I want you to know this. As the tree hit um, the three cars that were next to me, I thank God because I'm all right. I'm here. And you know what? God is good, and he's good all the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Anybody come here to bless the Lord on this morning? Hallelujah. Is anybody here to bless the Lord on this morning? Come on. I want you to lift up the name of Jesus. He's worthy to be praised. We serve a good God. Come on. Y'all should know this song. I want you to sing it with me. Oh, angel, angel, for you are good, good. and your mercy mercy endureth forever. Come on, somebody put your hand together. Say, arise, oh God, God. and take your place. And your mercy, and your mercy, and your 
because you ain't joined yet. Yes, Lord. I want you to stand, if you don't mind. Yes. I want you to stand. Thank you. For those online, if you're a visitor, put in the chat, visit. And thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you, each and every one of you. You passed a bunch of churches. You could have gone anywhere, but you blessed us with your presence. Your presence is our gift. Thank you so, so much. I want the members, I want somebody to just go shake their hand at the end of the day, at the end of the service. Thank you, and we look forward to you coming back. I want to acknowledge a special person that didn't know I was going to acknowledge her, but I am. Valerie Vi, um, can you wave your hand, stand up, something. Mm -hmm. Listen, do any of y'all live in Douglas County? Some of y'all live in Douglas County? We have a phenomenal person running for the probate judge in Douglas County. Y'all see that? Go on and talk. Have a conversation. Ask some questions. She's right here. Okay? All right. Next, we're going to have Miss Michelle come up and give you some announcements. And we just thank you so much for coming. Good morning, everyone. And while we are mentioning our special guest this morning, I also want to mention we have our own Sheriff Tim Pound that's here. Can you stand for us? Yes. And we also have city clerk, Miss Annette Stembridge, I believe. Yes, wonderful. Awesome, awesome. Well, I am Michelle Johnson. I'm going to bring your church announcements for today. All right. So here are our church announcements for um, April the 14th, 2024. New Manchester Choir, under the direction of Antoine Holman, will be joining us every fourth Sunday for Youth Sundays. Do you have a child who loves to sing? Okay, if so, please be sure to sign them up to join New Manchester Choir on stage every fourth Sunday. Each child will be given the songs to rehearse in preparation for fourth Sunday presentations. Um, and to sign up, please see our youth director, Ms. Consuela Gilcrest, that's here in the back, um, after church. Breakfast will be served to all participating youth, so we ask that they arrive by 10 a.m. If you are looking for a dynamic Bible study class, we welcome you to join us here at the House of Hope West Point every Wednesday from 7 to 8 p.m. for a phenomenal teaching by our very own Reverend J.C. Howard. <laughs> Absolutely. Dinner will be served from 6 to 6.30, so we ask that if you plan to join us for dinner that you register online so that we may prepare. 
If you are under, unable to attend um, in person, you may also stream us live on YouTube at the House of uh, Hope West Point. Invite a friend and bring a friend. We look forward to seeing you this Wednesday in person or online. House of Hope West Point will be having its first baptism. <laughs> if you would like to be baptized, please see Cynthia for online registration. The baptism will take place during the first warm Saturday in May. <laughs> and afterwards, we will host a cookout and ask that all members plan to attend. More information is soon to come regarding baptism details and sign up for the cookout attendance. Have you ever heard the praise team perform and wish you could join them on stage? Well, here's your chance. <laughs> House of Hope West Point will be forming a church choir. If you are ready, yeah. If you are ready to bless us with your very own melodies from heaven, please sign up with Deacon Homer after church for more information. May 12th marks that special time of year when we honor our mothers. We ask that all mothers wear a hat as special as the woman donning them. At the end of the service, we will take a group picture to captivate the women of House Hope West Point and their beautiful hats. And then lastly, our own very Reverend J.C. Howard will be hosting a new member fellowship on, up, on the upcoming Saturday. Um, we don't have the details as of yet, but we will, all members are welcome to attend, and more details and date and time will come. On behalf of our senior pastor, Dr. E. Dewey Smith, our cap campus pastor, Dr. Tim Rogers, and our staff pastor, Reverend J.C. Howard, we thank you all for your attention to these announcements, and thank you for joining us here at House of Hope West Point. Thank you. How many of y'all going to join the choir? Amen. I be hearing them good voices. I be like, yes, y'all need to be up here. Hallelujah. All right. Well, the speaker of the hour, I want to introduce you all to Pastor Christopher A. Wimberly, Sr. He's the senior pastor of Hunter Hill First Baptist Church of Atlanta. Pastor Wimberly's dynamic preaching approach equips and empowers the saints and touches the hearts of believers and non-believers. He's a native of Winder, Georgia, and he's been preaching since he was 19 years old. Somebody said, wow. <laughs> the vision of his church includes evangelizing and enlightening the sinner, embracing and encouraging the suffering, equipping and empowering the saints, and exalting the Savior. Amen. He is also an owner of the Wimberley funeral home in Gainesville, Georgia. Right. My God. He is married to the first lady, Felicia, and they are proud parents of their daughter, Jari, and their son, Christopher Jr. The next voice you will hear after the phenomenal praise team will be that of Pastor Christopher A. Wimberly Sr. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, Dad. God died. He, Jesus died on the cross for our sins because he thought of me, because he wanted to. He chose to do it. He didn't have to do it, but he did because he loved me so much. Hallelujah. I heard an old, old story about a savior that came from glory how he gave his life at calvary he did it all just for me they nailed him in his hands they nailed He was thinking of me, cause 
Jesus. In those nails was every mistake I made. The thorns were formed from my life. The lashes you took, they were meant for me. But you told God you would take them instead. You agreed to do it. You agreed to die. You agreed to give your life to save mine. Oh, what a sacrifice you made for me. And you told me to take them instead. Help me say.
Oscar. If you don't mind, if you will stand with me and just lift your hands right where you are. Our Father and our God, how we bless your name. Lord, we love you, we magnify you, we glorify you in this place. Lord, we thank you for all the many things that you have done for us. Thank you for how you brought us through last week and you brought us to this week. And Lord, as we start this week, Lord, we agree with the fact that we need to hear a word from you. So Lord, it is my prayer now, Lord, that you will speak to us. Speak to us through your word. So much of the fact, Lord, that we'll leave this place better than the way we came in. We need to hear from you. As I stand to proclaim your word, it is my prayer now, God, that you speak to me, through me, for me, and in spite of me, that your people will hear from you. And when we leave this place, you get all the credit, all the glory, and all the praise because it belongs to you anyhow. All these things we ask in the wonderful, precious, powerful, matchless name of Christ Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen. Come on, can you put your hands together and bless God in this place today? Come on. Come on, we can do a little better than that. Can we bless God in this place today? We give all praises to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has allowed all of us to be here, certainly to my friend and my brother, um, Senior Pastor E. Dewey Smith, and certainly to the campus pastor, Pastor Rogers, and to all of you, it's just good to be here. Amen. And I thank my friend, um, Pastor E. Dewey Smith, who uh, called me on last night and asked me to come to share. And I'm just glad to be here on this morning. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me in the Old Testament to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 12. Jeremiah chapter 12. Jeremiah chapter 12, and I want to begin reading with verse number 1. Jeremiah 12, verse 1 says these words, Righteous art thou, O Lord, when I plead with thee. Yet let me talk with thee of thy judgment. Wherefore doth the way of the wicked prosper? Wherefore are all they happy that deal very treacherously? Thou hast planted them, yea, they have taken root, they grow, yea, they bring forth fruit. Thou art near in their mouth, but far from their hearts. Verse 3 says, But thou, O Lord, knowest me, thou hast seen me, and tried my heart toward thee. Pull them out like sheep for the slaughter. Prepare them for the day of slaughter. How long? Shall the land mourn and the herbs of every field wither for the wickedness of them that dwell therein? The beasts are consumed and the birds because they said he shall not see our last day. Verse 5 says this, If thou hast run with the footmen and they have wearied thee, then how can thou run with horses? I want to stop right there. Look at verse 5 again. If you have run with footmen and they got you tired, how are you going to run with horses? Better yet, let me put it like this. He says, if you can't take it on this level, what you going to do when I take you to the next level? Real quickly, I want to talk from this subject, one word. I want to talk about challenges challenges ask all of you in the household of faith repeat after me challenges say it again say challenges my brothers and my sisters i'm quite sure you'll agree with me when i say that life is full of challenges matter of fact you can't get around it all of us will have challenges and i'm quite sure you'll agree with me when i say that it seems like each and every day come with this own new set of challenges but what I want to share with you this morning on the first part of this message is that when it comes to challenges there are two types of people in this room there are those who run from challenges and there are those who will embrace challenges I know you're saying well preacher I don't understand embracing challenges especially those challenges that are difficult those things that in my life 
that causes me to be worried and stressed? Why would I accept them instead of run from them? Well, please understand, those who accept challenges is not for everybody. But it's only for those who understand that our lives are in the hands of God. Those who accept challenges are those who understand and know that God has a purpose and plan for my life. Those who accept challenges understand and know that God is the one that order my steps. Challenges for those who accept challenges are those who understand that whatever God allows in my life is working for my good. And I believe I got about five witnesses in here and about five online that can testify when you look back over your life you really have to thank God for some challenges that came in your life simply because you would not be who you are or where you are had it not been for some challenges matter of fact always remember this it's the challenges that bring about changes let me say it one more time challenges bring about changes and is there anybody in here that can look back over your life and testify that you have had some moments where you thought you weren't going to make it you had some moments that was very challenging in your life but when you look back at it now you have to give God glory and give God praise for the challenges in your life let me tell you this this morning watch this challenges watch this are inevitable but defeat is optional I'm gonna say it again challenges are inevitable but defeat is optional what do you mean preacher by that you cannot get around challenges but it's your choice if you want to live defeated but when you know who you are and whose you are you got to tell yourself that I'm never defeated is there anybody in here that can testify I'm going through some challenges right now but one thing about it you will never know that about my challenges because I would not walk around like I'm defeated because I'm never defeated how do you know you never defeated because I know who I am and whose I am and I know what God's word says about me. Let me see, can I get some help right here? I'm never defeated because greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. I'm never defeated because no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I know I'm not defeated because my ladder shall be greater than my former. I'm never defeated because he promised me that we Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I need about four. I make five witnesses in here that can lift your hands and open your mouth and testify. I may be challenged, but I'm never defeated. I come to tell you, even the best of us will have challenges. Yes, us that come to church every Sunday. Yes, us that work in ministry. Yes, us that preach in the pulpit. Yes, us that love the Lord. All of us will have challenges. And so it is when we look at our text today in Jeremiah, we see here is a man of God, a man that loves God, a man that loves God's people, but yet got some challenges. What kind of challenges does Jeremiah have? Well, when you read about Jeremiah, you will discover that here is a man of God, watch this, that takes on the call that God tells him to do to preach to his people. And you will discover that when Jeremiah takes on this calling or this task or this assignment, watch this, you will discover that when he does what God tells him to do, watch this, he gets talked about, he gets ridiculed, he gets beat up, and he's only doing what God told him to do. Let me ask you a question. What do you do when you do what God tells you to do and it backfires on you? What do you do when you sow your best but reap the worst? And my brothers and my sisters, you will discover that Jeremiah takes on the assignment and Jeremiah's assignment, watch this, was not only to preach God's word, but it was to challenge God's people to lift up the standard that they let drop. In other words, God says, Jeremiah, I need you to challenge my people to lift up the standards that they have dropped. And out of all of this, brothers and sisters, when Jeremiah does what God tells him to do, what really messes him up is that he discovers, watch this, that the righteous are suffering, but the wicked folk are prospering. Jeremiah says to himself, I'm doing what you tell me to do. It's not going the way I thought it would go. 
And while I'm preaching what you tell me to preach, it looks like the wicked folk are doing better than the righteous. My brothers and my sisters, here Jeremiah is. He's in this situation. He's looking and he's saying to himself, Lord, I don't understand. And when you look at Jeremiah 12, where we are now, this is Jeremiah's prayer to God. This is his prayer to God because even though he's frustrated, he's upset, he don't understand, this is his prayer to God. Preacher, why do you keep saying that? Because I want to remind somebody here this morning that when you are frustrated and when you don't understand, you got to learn how to take it to God in prayer. I know it may sound a little old school, but is there anybody in here that know prayer still works? Prayer still changes things. Prayer still turn things around. And one thing we have to learn in the body of Christ is that when we're going through, don't post about it, pray about it. And here Jeremiah is. In chapter 12 is his prayer to God. Look what Jeremiah says in verse number 1. He says, righteous art thou, O Lord. Right there, stop right there. What he's really saying, Lord, before I talk to you about anything, I want to let you know that I know you right. That's it. He's saying, God, before I talk about my problems and my issues, I want to let you know that I know you right. You always been right, you are right, and you will always be right. And my brothers and my sisters, I come to tell you that we got to get to a point in our life of understanding, regardless of how I feel, regardless of what I'm going through, regardless of what I don't understand, one thing I know, God, you are right. Can I tell you something? Never allow negative circumstances to make you have a negative theology. He says, God, I want you to know that you're right and you're always right. But now after he says that, he says, now that we've established that, let me talk to you about something. I want to talk to you about some things that's been going on around here. What is it, Jeremiah? Jeremiah says, God, I want to talk to you about why does it seem like the wicked folk are doing better than your folk. I want to talk to you, why is it that the wicked seem like they are prospering and the righteous look like they are suffering? And my brothers and my sisters, if we just be honest, the same question that Jeremiah asked is the same question that you and I have asked before. When we look around and we say, here I am, I love God. I worship God, I read, I pray every day, but it seemed like some folk around me who don't even know God look like they're doing better than I am, and sometimes it make you wonder, God, what's really going on? Is there anybody in here ever been there before where you look around and you ask yourself the question, Lord, what's really going on? You know how it is. You've been on your job for quite some time and you've been there. You've been faithful. And then here comes somebody out of nowhere and they come in and they get the promotion. They don't even know God. They don't even trust God. And you sit there and you ask yourself the question, Lord, here I am. I've been faithful. I've been here for a while and somebody else get the promotion. God, what's really going on. A parent may look at their own children and they say, I brought my child up in church. We was in church every Sunday, but my next door neighbor never stepped foot in church. Don't even acknowledge God, but as our children grow up, my child end up on drugs or in jail, and their child end up going to college with a nice career. God was really going on. Somebody may say, here I am trying to live a single, saved, sanctified, celibate life. But every now and then, I get a little lonely. I want to date every now and then. But my friend who has no morals, no respect, look like they got a date every Friday night. And I'm sitting at home on social media. God, what's really going on? I always go to the wedding and catch the bouquet, but I can't find the right man to catch me. Lord, what's really going on. Why does it seem like the wicked folk are doing better than the righteous? But can I tell you something? Not only is it the same question that Jeremiah asked, not only the same question that we asked, it's the same question Asaph had in Psalm 73. 
You remember Asap when Asap said, my foot almost slipped when I saw how the wicked folk were prospering. But I'm so glad he said, but it's only when I went to the sanctuary that I had to see their end. And I come to help somebody here this morning to let you know when it comes to the wicked people that you're looking at, you just see their beginning, but you got to wait and see what the end is going to be. And if Psalm 73 not good enough for you, flip the numbers around to Psalms 37. Fret not thyself of evildoers or be envious or workers of iniquity for they soon shall be turned away. Jeremiah says, Lord, I want to know why are the wicked folk prospering. Look what he says in verse 2. And if you think about it, God, you planted them. In other words, whatever they have, whether they realize it or not, you was the one that gave it to them. They have what they have because of you. But if the truth be known, Lord, these folk Say one thing with their mouth, but their heart is far from you. Jeremiah says in verse number three, he says, but look here, God, you know me. <laughs> you have seen me and tried me, but look, let me tell you something. Jeremiah is so frustrated, y'all, that in verse number three, he says this, Lord, pull them out like sheep for the slaughter. Now watch this. Now I'm going to see where the real folk at right now. Jeremiah is so frustrated, y'all, with these people. He says in so many words, Lord, I'm tired of dealing with them. I'm tired of them. Do something about it. Now, I know you're sitting there looking at me with that holy, righteous look. But all of us done dealt with some people in our lives at some point in time and say, Lord, I'm tired of them. Deal with them. I wish I had about five real people in here. You know what Jeremiah's really saying? Jeremiah's really saying, Lord, you know they're not right. I'm right, <laughs> but you know they're not right. He says in so many words, Lord, you are slow with your judgment. And I thought the same thing too. I was agreeing with Jeremiah till the Lord showed me something. And the Lord said, Wimberly, Jeremiah thought I was slow with my judgment. And you think sometimes I'm slow with my judgment. But while you're sitting there looking at others, you ought to thank me that I am slow with my judgment. I said, Lord, why do you say that? He says, take your eyes off of everybody else and look at your own life. And you ought to thank me that I'm slow with my, somebody going to catch you here in a minute. And I need about 25 real folk in here that can testify I haven't always been where I am right now. And I'm too busy giving God praise and giving God glory because it could have been me. It could have been the other way around. Some Somebody ought to give them glory and say, God, I thank you for your grace and your mercy. Right. Right. Jeremiah is crying out to God. In verse 4, he says, Lord, how long is this going to last? How long Whew. are you going to let this go on? How long are things going to be the way they are? Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, let me show you something. Jeremiah cries out to God. Verse 1, 2, 3, and 4. God responds to him in verse 5. Look what God says to him. God says, if you run with footmen and they got you tired, how you going to run with the horses? Now, if you anything like me, I'm quite sure Jeremiah thought like I thought. What in the world does that have to do with what I'm talking about? God, I'm talking to you about these wicked folk. I'm talking to you about the things I've been going through. And your response to me is about footmen and horses. Why are you telling me about footmen and horses when I'm talking about the things that I'm going through dealing with these people? Well, here it is, brothers and sisters. Don't miss it. God responds to him in a way to help him navigate through the problem. And what he says is, watch this. Remember when one nation would fight another nation, they would always send out what we call foot soldiers first. 
And foot soldiers was not the quickest. They was not the strongest. They was not the most equipped. But they would go at first. And once you dealt with the foot soldiers or the footmen, then would come men on horses and the men on horses they were quicker they were faster they were more equipped and what God was trying to tell Jeremiah the stuff you dealing with now is nothing but foot soldiers the things you dealing with now are nothing but footmen but God say don't you understand that greater is coming and because greater is coming it's gonna be some more things that come with greater but if you can't deal with the foot soldiers you are not gonna be able to run with the horses I come to help somebody in here before I leave to let you know whatever you are going through right now it's nothing but foot soldiers I need about 20 people in here that can give God a praise and give God a shout and knowing that the things I'm dealing with right now is nothing but foot soldiers they talking about you foot soldiers they lying on you, foot soldiers. They talking about you on social media, foot soldiers. But when you understand what God has ordained for your life, when you understand what God has for you, you got to realize that where God is taking you, nobody said the road is going to be easy. But one thing you got to realize is that greater is coming. I need about 20 people in here that can lift your hands and testify greater is coming. Can I help you out? Can I help you out? Listen, the enemy is not concerned about where you are. The enemy is not concerned about where you are. He's concerned about where you're headed. And that's why everything is coming at you right now. But you ought to know who you are and whose you are of understanding. Right now, I'm dealing with foot soldiers, but greater is coming. Is there anybody in here that can testify? When I get through all this agony, I'm going to have a greater anointing. When I get through it, all these burdens, I got a greater blessing. When when I get through with all my dilemmas, uh, it's going to be greater deliverance. Uh, when I get through all this frustration, uh, it's going to be greater favor. Uh, I wish I had some help in here. When I get through all of my pain, uh, it's going to be a greater promotion. Uh, is there anybody in here uh, that can lift your hands uh, and open your mouth uh, and shout greater uh, is coming? Uh, I got to leave you here, uh, but I want to remind somebody uh, that whatever you're going through you are in training for a trial you not yet in will you look at your neighbor and say neighbor you are in training for a trial you're not yet in because I come to tell you whatever stresses you strengthens you is there anybody in here that believes whatever stresses you strengthens you and the Bible says he asked Jeremiah he said if you can't run with the footman tell me how are you gonna run with the horses but I came to tell somebody you are designed to run with horses. Y'all ain't helping me preach. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you are built to run with horses. Because I want you to know that a man in his own street cannot run with a horse. But when the Lord got his hands on you, you can run with anybody in this house can wave your hand and testify when God hand is on me I can run with the horses turn to your neighbor and say neighbor I can run with the horses say neighbor I don't know about you but one thing I know, I'm a stallion saint. 
I'm a Clydesdale Christian. Y'all ain't happy. I'm a stallion saint. I'm a Clydesdale Christian. Turn to your neighbor just one more time and say, neighbor, I'm a stallion saint. I'm a Clydesdale Christian. I was made to run with the horses. I got to leave your house of hope, but I got one more thing. I got to tell y'all, not only will God give you strength to run with him, but he'll give you strength to outrun the horses. Turn to your neighbor, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, God will give you strength to outrun the horses. Wait a minute, preacher. How can God give me strength to outrun the horses? Well, I just told you that a man in his own strength cannot outrun a horse. But here's the good news. A horse can't outrun a eagle. Y'all missed the shout. I said a horse cannot outrun a eagle and I believe in some eagles in here this morning if you are eagle you ought to spread your arms and testify that I am a eagle how do you know that God will make me a eagle come here Isaiah chapter 40 verse 29 he give power to the faint and to them who have no might. He will increase strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And young men shall utterly fall. But here is a shout. But they... But they that wait upon the Lord, what will he do? He shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like an eagle. Do I got a witness in here? Is there anybody in this house that can give God glory, give God praise? Come on and praise him. You're going to be able to outrun the horses I'm going to outrun the horses how you know that because God ain't through with me God ain't through with me Jeremiah said that he know the thoughts and the plans he have for me is there anybody here know that God got plans for you is there anybody here No God ain't through with you come on and give them glory come on and give them praise come on and give them glory come on and give them praise touch, touch about three people tap them one time and say I'll run them 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 Witness here. Do I got a witness here? Yes, you're gonna have challenges, but you can make it through the challenges. I need about five more people that can take on yourself, lay hands on yourself, and say, I can make it. I will make it. Yeah. Nothing but foot soldiers. But greater is coming. Is there anybody here that can thank God for greater? Can praise him in advance for what's about to take place. Put your hands together. Open your mouth and give God glory.
but I'm going to keep running. Amen. Because I know God got great things in store for me. Amen. Can you just wave your hand and just tell yourself, promise of yourself, I know God got great things in store for me. I'm going to keep on running. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to pause right here. Amen. The gospel has been preached. Amen. And something may have been said that have pricked your heart, that have touched you in your spirit. Amen. And we want to uh, extend this opportunity to you to come. Something in that word has, has touched you. You've been struggling and you've been stranded. You've been trying to find your way. You've been focusing on what God has been doing in everybody else's life. And it seemed like you don't have a sense of direction of what God wants to do in your life. And you say, you know what? In order for me to get to that place where I need to be, I need to develop a relationship with Christ for myself. Because one thing about God, he loves us so much that he looks beyond our faults. And yet he still meets our every need. And you may be saying today, you know what, I'm in that place, I'm in that place. When you come today, come on. Can you give the Lord a praise? Come on, if you're in here today, this is your opportunity to come. This is your opportunity to come and give Christ your life. You've tried it your way. You've done it your way. You've found out that it didn't work. Why don't you make Jesus your choice today? The old church used to say it like this. I wouldn't leave out and go home and say, I'm going to think about it. How many know tomorrow is not promised? How many know that all we have is right now? And if I don't know anything else, I want to make sure that I know who Christ is. Because guess what? He already knows who you are, but he's waiting on you to come. And then secondly, there may be somebody here today. You've been visiting with us. You've been fellowshipping with us. This may be even your first time. You're saying, you know what? I want to be a part of this church. I want to be a part of this ministry. Why don't you come today? House of Hope West Point would love to. Hey, our senior pastor, Pastor E. Dewey Smith, our campus pastor, Pastor Tim Rogers, we would love to embrace you right here in the House of Hope West Point. Will you come today? And then third of that, maybe somebody here today, you say, you know what, I'm caught between a rock and a hard place. I'm saved, I'm sanctified, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. But I find myself in a no way out situation. I've been praying, I've been crying, I've been praying, I've been crying, I've been trusting, I've been praying, I've been crying, and it seems like nothing is working. Would you come today and let us pray and agree with you today? You just need somebody to be in agreement with you. As I always say, we'll pray with you. You know why? Because the most powerful prayer that can ever be prayed is the prayer that you pray. And if we can come into agreement, the Bible said, where two or three are gathered in his name, he said, I'll be in the midst. And I believe that whatever you need today, God is ready and he's able to provide for you right now. How many believe that he can do it right now? I'm not talking about next week. I'm not talking about tomorrow. You may be sitting here right now. You got a 911 in your life, and you need God to do it for you right now. How many believe that God can do it right now? I wish I had some faithful folk in here today that know that God can do it right now. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. 
Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise on this morning? Come on. Come on. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Let's thank our newcomers for coming. Amen. Can we give God praise from them on today? Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. Let us move forward now. We're going to prepare now as and us prepare to come. It is offering time. It is giving time. Amen. Amen. I ain't give it two or three hand claps for that. Now y'all was shouting and praising and jumping when the word was going for. But when I said it's time to give, we just had two or three hand claps. How many know we're still in praise and worship? Come on, somebody. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If you have, if you if you need an envelope, if you just lift your hands out, us will be glad to give you an envelope. On today, amen. If you have an envelope, amen. Just lift your hands out. Us will be glad to assist you on today. And then I know we're in a, a technology era, amen. If you want to give by way of your phone, amen. Uh, dollar sign H O H W P. We don't have our website. Is it uh, H O H W P? Uh, dot com for the uh, if you'd like to give on the website um, amen it's on behind me oh okay I was looking back there at that screen okay here we go I was trying to I was trying to wing it right there y'all amen <laughs> amen all right you can give online amen at hohwp.org and then if you want to text to give 7708 uh, 485 7109. And then again, the cash app is uh, dollar sign H O H W P. Amen. So you have several ways that you can give on today. Amen. Have a whatever offering you have and whatever device you're using. If you would just lift your hands right quick and let us just ask, go before God to bless. Amen. As we prepare to give on today. Father in heaven, we thank you now as we come to this part of the service. We thank you, Lord God, for every heart, for every giver in this place. Lord, whatever your purpose in their heart on today, Lord, we give you glory, honor, and praise for it, O oh God. And those that had the desire to give, but Lord, for whatever reason, did not have it, Lord God, we ask that you bless that they may be able to give on the next time. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for what we're about to take up in this place today, Lord God. We ask that you bless it, multiply it, that it may be used for the building and the upkeep of your kingdom. And Lord, that, it may, that we may be able to further the ministry, Lord God, throughout Douglas County and the surrounding areas, Lord God. We give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Let every heart say amen. Amen. If you will, let us stand. Amen. Our ushers will lead you from the back um, on the outside walls of you if you're standing. Let us come around real quick. And then again, if you're giving by device, just come by and tap the basket. Amen. And uh, amen. Amen. We're always standing. Let us come. we leave amen if you're looking forward amen to coming again for our bible study make sure that you sign up on the before you leave that way we'll know how to prepare for this wednesday bible study uh, again we'll be serving at six o'clock to six thirty. amen so if you're not doing anything come on out let's be a part of this powerful bible studies that we've been having the last several weeks and uh we'll go right into our bible studies at seven o'clock amen amen so make sure that you do that okay 
Amen. 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 Okay. Amen. Uh, also, again, let's give our sheriff another hand clap of praise. His lovely wife is with us. And I'm going to mess her name up. I was trying to memorize. I'm, I'm not telling I'm talking about the, the judge. Valerie Vive. So you get my age, your mind starts slipping. Amen. 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 Let's give them a hand, can we? Amen. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Amen. And again, if you'd like to, to shake hand with our, our sheriff, amen. Uh, I'm, I'm quite sure he'll be glad to, to, to meet you on the, after service. So if you will, let us come and do that, amen. And again, we'd like to say thank you for an awesome job that you're doing here in Douglas County. Amen. 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 God bless you. And uh, we're just looking forward, amen, that uh, God will continue to bless us in every area in this county. Amen. This is such an awesome county to live in, even though I'm a neighbor, but I come through Douglas County all the time. And I drive like I'm going through Douglas County. Amen. I drive like I'm doing the speed limit, both hands on the steering wheel. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Amen. Amen. But we give God praise. Amen. All right. If all hearts and minds are clear, let us stand. Amen. 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 Lift your hands right where you are. Amen. May the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with these that do on henceforth now and forever, evermore. Let every heart say amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We'll see y'all on next week. We'll be right here. Same place.